let's get to the D-line. All right. Uh, it was one of my favorite groups last year coming out of spring. And I I feel like I was in the minority there. <clears throat> Crazy, I know. <laughs> but there was a lot of, I mean, so we didn't know that Ty and Nash were going to play like that. We didn't know what to expect out of Cam Lenhart and Prince Will. And I think all of those guys at least exceeded the majority of people's expectations. And that gave us a surprisingly good defensive line last year. The question now is, can all of those guys take that to the next level to go surprisingly good to actually good, mm. right? Because there's a, there's a difference then there's a difference from being good compared to expectations and just being good, right? There were times earlier in the year we were talking about Nebraska basketball. They were good compared to what we expected. Then we got to, I don't know, January, February, like, oh, maybe they're just good, right? Maybe this is just a good group. And maybe, maybe that defensive line got to that point last year, but we're adding, I mean, Riley Van Poppel played some last year, but he'll be, I think, a big part of what they're doing this year. You've got, um, you've got uh, Maverick Noonan should be a part of the equation this year. Uh, and then you've got. I saw him. I was getting. Well, it doesn't matter what I was doing, but <laughs> I was going down the ramp, and he was going up the ramp. And uh, I just had to give him a love hug. Just, I mean, he's got the big smile and the free flowing locks, but he looks spectacular. Yeah. Not, not that his frame mm -hmm. was not outstanding to be. I mean, he left. Yeah. Elk South looking like a dude, uh, but. You know, he had to say he had to come back from like rehab is a lonely place. Oh, it's the worst. Uh, I would, I, I'm close to probably thinking that like it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It, it's, it's the worst might be an exaggeration. It's, but it's, it's, bad. it's a lone, it's a lonely place, especially if you're red shirting because of that and you're just because you're away from the team so yeah. much. Now, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's luck of the draw too. Like, who am I rehabbing with? Yeah. Like, who else got hurt that I'm going through this with every day? Shoot, man, to see Buford and, and Singleton together. See, that wouldn't be a bad rehab no. partner. Yeah, you got position group. Like-minded, yep. similar skill set. Yep. You guys both know you're going to contribute. It's not easy, but it's easier it's better. It's better. than yeah. kind of being on an island with somebody that's not with you, and you know that you got to go play catch-up. Mm -hmm. Right? So that unto itself can be it can thin the herd oh yeah right away so don't uh, don't ever undersell or assume because we do it as fans all the time oh man when they get back healthy now you gotta get there man like well and another guy uh brody tagaloa yeah who i yeah. think they were excited about before the car come, it was the car accident come right? a long way man like that's a guy that if he's able to return to where he was <laughs> i've watched him pretty close um and, and so there, there's, there's, you know, there's obviously some work to be done there, but like rehab is, especially now that I think it's back to the rigor. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not practicing, it's zero fun. Yeah. And you ask some of the old heads, like this ain't big, like you're not standing around watching. You have like your own station and group. I saw this at Iowa and I saw it again at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. It looked miserable. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, and I remember saying to one of the guys in Iowa city, I'm like, oh, what's, what's that over there? And they have a name for it. And they're like, Oh, that's, that's that group. And I started watching them for a little bit. Cause there were two really, really good players that weren't participating in spring. Mm -hmm. And so I just was kind of watching their movement because I wanted to 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 just gauge it, right? And I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to be over there. No. Right? Because I knew, like, if you had to go work with Doak or some of our trainers, like, back in the day, it, it was miserable. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you didn't want to be on the Cybex machine. You didn't want to be on the, you didn't want to be in the pool. You didn't want to be in the cold. Tub. You didn't want to do any of that. Yeah. Right? You, you didn't want to be down in the pit you know, rehabbing and getting back into conditioning. <laughs> like, that was miserable, <laughs> right? So it's like, yeah, I think I'd rather just stay out here and try to practice. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? For and sure. so 
now you don't want to do anything to where the point where you're you're hurting yeah, yourself. You got further damage. But you, it's it's nice and it's refreshing to understand the difference between injured and hurt. Mm -hmm. And also, when you build such a competitive environment, you get guys like Nash who don't want to miss any reps or Gifford. Yeah, you you like Gifford doesn't have to be out there in the spring, and he's not one hundred percent healthy. But dude's a headbanger. Yeah, right. So watching bugs him. Those are the guys that set the tone. Uh, wanted to get into, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Van Poppel, Kai Wallen. Yeah, I wanted to get into some guys Judy. That, that didn't really play last year, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know one guy, and we, we brought up Tagaloa. Uh, I know a lot of people were high on Vincent Carroll Jackson coming in um, as well. You've got, you mentioned Kai Wallen. Elijah Judy's a super interesting one. He's, we're ready to give up on him. Yeah, I mean, M remember the whole narrative about because we were kind of hitting this string of guys that we'd gotten from the SEC and it wasn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, yeah. He's a, a highly touted Texas A&M guy. Was a guy that, and honestly, he was one of the reasons that I was high on the defensive line group. I was like, yeah, hey, they're gonna have they're gonna have this transfer coming in. He's gonna be an impact player right away, even more so than probably being high on either Ty Robinson or Nash, right? So I'm like, ah, don't worry. He'll take one of those spots. It'll be fine. And doesn't really play a lot last year. As you said, we kind of give up on him. But then we hear his name pop back up early in getting, spring. Yeah. As well, he was oh, playing he, last year and it was like, wait, I, what happened so quick? Yeah. Remember Minnesota? Yeah. They're like, mm, kind of rolling through a lot of the D line <laughs> early. But I'm he like, but he, he, was, like a new dude. he wasn't one of those guys I thought last year that would be like an impact guy. Right? I'm, I'm one. I'm, he was in the rotation. I'm tracking stuff. with you. But and so but you, then you hear um, I think it was Tony White talking early in the spring who goes, oh, he's going to be a really important part of what we're doing. He's going to be a really important part if we want to be the number one defense in the country. Hey, did you roll your eyes? No, I didn't. Because now you now it's I like, believe him. Yeah. Now it's like if he this dude says something. Yeah. Like the Tommy it, Hill thing last year, I rolled my eyes, right? Yeah. I was like, come on. Shoot, so did everybody. Come on. <laughs> so, like, did, so did every. And I remember distinctly, especially early in spring practice last year, when they kept, they're like, this I got to see. Yeah. That's what I said to myself. This I got to see. Yeah. I was so mad at that guy two years ago mm -hmm. in a particular broadcast. And, and I, I mean, I can tell on myself. Sure. I, mean, I, I looked at, at Sharpie and I go, there's, I, I can't play with him. I was like, I don't understand what he's doing out there. I, I can't. I don't understand I was, why I was they keep putting him so... out there. And then <laughs> I, I was <laughs> dingling. Um, and then I just remember watching him at practice because Mickey and he's got like, I've heard this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Heard it from Scott. I heard it from Mickey. I heard it from Chins. And it just was never kind of a thing. Yeah. And then late. He kind of showed some flashes on offense. But it's like at some point, I need you to top t stop telling me how good a guy is. I need to see mm -hmm. how good he is. And and then, you know, he started off last spring in the doghouse. Mm -hmm. And then he became, it's weird, right? It's kind of what I gravitate towards because I want a success story. Mm -hmm. So I just started watching him at practice. And I'm like, OMG. Like this is that tough love thing. And, and set, excuse me, setting the standard and the expectation. Of, it's It's working. Mm-hmm. Like it's he can take a picture of him at practice and say who's the new guy and it's like uh but you know why it works and we've talked about this before it's because they have invested in him as a person right the whole whole list that is the only way that works I see I you can't see it so it's not always fun to talk about but I actually think that's their greatest strength oh it's I would one hundred percent agree it's I because you can't get away with some of the stuff. That they say and do in yeah. terms of like the the rigor and the competition and the hard yep. coaching yep. and the getting after guys a little bit. Oh, yeah. You can't get away with any of that, at least long term, unless there's two things. There's only two ways you can get a, uh, get away with that. And one of them we know is not true. The, the one way is that you win every game. If you just win at a super high level, mm -hmm. nobody says anything till you start losing. Right. So you can be Bobby Knight. Because you're winning national titles at Indiana in the 70s and 80s, right? You can be that guy then because you're winning at such a high level, nobody can argue with you. The other way is if you are so invested in them as people, they know that whatever you say, 
is coming from a good place. So not to go back to this, but I think what you just talked about was why I wanted you to back off of Dan Hurley. Because his the way that his players talk about him and the way that he gets them to practice, mm-hmm. it has to be more the latter than the previous. So let me get off that real quick. You don't have to go back and, and say, get I've, that. You're just, just lighting a firework right now, so, but it's fine. Like I, you got to be able to say to MJ Sherman or uh, Judy mm-hmm. or – I've watched him check like Kai Wallen, right? And you say some things, and it's like – he just talked to that dude like he doesn't even know him, mm-hmm. right? Like, but over time, when people trust you, you can say things like, "Listen, if you ever want to be elite, it has to start with your fitness." Mm-hmm. Get, yeah, you're not in good enough shape for this right now. Get a get get in get in better shape. Yeah, get over the fitness hump. This, right now, listen, player X, we're not talking about a talent issue. Get in shape. Yeah, and it's like, like that's something totally in your control. Take care of it. it but sometimes you feel like people are talking to you like they don't even know you, mm-hmm. but they are talking to you like that. Just the opposite. Because it's because know. it's because they know yes. you. That, that's how they'll talk to you. You've built up a trust that whatever you are telling them is a in their best interest and b coming from a good place, okay. coming from a place where you want them to succeed maybe even more than they want themselves to succeed in that moment. And at some point you hope it manifests itself into wins, but for Nash and Ty to be championing and cheering on younger D linemen. Mm-hmm. I told this like four or five years ago, and I'd say, you know, when you can cheer for other people. Even at your own expense. And it may be at your own expense. That's when the magic happens. Yep. I just didn't. You just don't know when it's going to be. Or if it's going to be. A lot of times it doesn't happen. When you cheer for your position group, because you know what's slowly starting to happen? It's it's weird. Like pre practice is turned into like pre pre practice. <laughs> pre 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 practice is turned into like pre 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 practices. Because at some point, I I've seen it. Coach Brown started it, and I didn't even like him then. Yeah, I was like, well, who do these guys think they are coming out? Like, well, practice isn't even started yet. But I know after about three practices my first year, ask any running back. Coach Solich would say, those wide receivers out there, they're not out working us. So then our practice turned into pre-pre-practice. <laughs> and instead of standing around, it was like, hey, get the bags. I'm like, ah, we ain't ready for the bags yet. Like, we're not – this ain't practice yet. Like, leave the bags where they're at. <laughs> you know? But you'd see other groups – see, when you can't beat the offensive lineman out, mm-hmm. D-line comes out a little early. Yeah. When when you see the D line working, it's like as a linebacking group, hey man, let's go get down in the corner, man. They're working on their run fits and hand placement. Let's mm-hmm. go strike. When you're watching the O line and you're a running back, it's like, oh man, look, see how they're getting their head around their footwork. Hey, let's go work on hey, let's go do a crease drill. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, guys are like active in all these other little pockets of the the practice facility. Mm-hmm. Because they don't know any better. You 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 don't want to be the group that's like standing around. Yeah, that lets everybody else down. <laughs> you know, we were, we were talking. I think it was Micah that asked Caleb at the at the dinner table the other day. We were talking about something in the huddle or or whatever. And Micah's like, "Man, that's a lot of guys. How do you hear everybody?" And you know, Caleb just looking at him like, "Get get in a position where you can hear." <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? So it was just like, yeah. All the things that you think people aren't picking up on that are little things that matter, mm-hmm. like they, they they actually matter. That's how you can that's how you can bring in competitive people at your position. Yeah. Like you embrace it. Yeah. Right. You, if if you can get guys to, I'm telling you, like you you watch that D line is big that that ethic. Not only it's being birthed a lot of it. Yeah, Coach Knighton is a a true yard dog, mm-hmm. right? Like that dude will guard his yard, even though he sounds like a CPA. Yep. <laughs> hey man, my man was out here the other day. I swear to goodness, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen because I know his personality. Mm-hmm. He had on a stocking cap that covered the ears and covered his mouth, and a a hat that had like a ball on it, <laughs> like a brass, like a yeah. stocking cap. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. How is this big, mean-spirited, funny dude out here in that? 
<laughs> but you watch him coach. I bet nobody said on him. Man, that dude could come out there in pajamas. <laughs> and people would be like, oh, man, that's just Coach Knight. I just, <laughs> listen, if I'm lying, I'm dying. That that's that's how that that's how you know that's how he can get all those guys to play. Well, and that's the other thing I like about not just this defensive line, but good defensive lines in general, right? Is I feel like they can set the tone of competitiveness for your entire team and maybe defensive line more than anywhere else because you can logistically play eight guys pretty easily, right? So it's really easy for them to be competitive with one another because. Most of those guys know, like, hey, I can still get my reps. Mm -hmm. Like, I can still get in the game here. Where it's like, okay, even an offensive line, I know they want to rotate some in there. It's usually not as fluid as the defensive line in terms of rotation. Maybe the only other group that's that fluid. Yeah, but you'll get to a standard, right? Because yes. you'll know, listen, if I'm only good for 20 snaps, hey, watch these 20. I'll say watch the 20 watch, snaps. watch these 20 snaps but I'm about to get. Also, it always – so you get the taste of what you want, yeah. and you're still working for more, right? Because imagine in that group. If you've got a guy that you have to leave on the field for 40 snaps, mm -hmm. imagine how good that guy's going to be coming out of that group. If Coach Dighton's like, I can't take this guy off the field after 20 snaps. I have to leave him in there for 40 snaps because he's that good. The competitiveness just builds and feeds off of itself. I remember Jamel Williams, and, he, and this is kind of a foreman thing too. Some of these young, really active backers, mm -hmm. like they knew like their, if their spot was special teams, Hey, watch this. Yeah. Because they were so, I don't know if offended is the word, but bothered by the fact they kind of weren't in the rotation. Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, you could have been a freshman or a redshirt freshman playing behind a third year junior, right? Yeah. An All American. Like, or I'm all not, I, I, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. It, yeah. It, it was deep, but it's the whole reps thing. If, if you're only going to get a certain amount or this is what you're going to do, mm -hmm. you, you'll get to the point because it's such a competitive arena that it'll be the best you got and some guys they know that they're only going to be found maybe on do you hear coach foley talking about when when like d-line or guys come in and say they want to be on special teams mm -hmm. you set the standard i'm gonna give you four or five things four or five minutes that's it we're moving on like you either you want to do this or you don't yeah and it's just weird that not weird but it's it's not a it's not a coincidence that that standard is being set because it's all about competing. The cool thing is, is it's not just a coach competitive thing. Mm -hmm. right, coach rule. He always jokes about giving the example. Well, you tell those guys, we got, we got 15 third and shorts. It's like, Oh man, we got 15 more at the end. It's like, Hey, the one are these 15. Yeah. Such and such. And then all of a sudden it's like, they can go all day. hundred percent. So he, he and he kept saying this, and I think we kind of low key rolled our eyes, mm -hmm. like oh man, yeah, competitive, competitive, competitive. But like the 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 three on the the three different teams, and coming up with that, like that's creative, mm -hmm. because you felt like your team had a competitive spirit. So how can we build on that? Yeah, that's taking self inventory real time. Now how it manifests itself again in wins and losses, is is a is the seen. is the next phase. Yeah, to be determined. But being doing your homework in the meantime mm -hmm. is is progress. Uh, it's so trickle down effect. Just a couple a uh, couple of minutes left here. But are there? I know you really like Riley Van Poppel. You brought him up with Shafe on Tuesday. Is there any other guys in that defensive line room that you're looking at and you go, "Hey, I, I think that guy might have a big year." Mm, I mean, obviously Nash. I like Van Poppel. I like you. I like a lot of those guys. You I, like Nash at the lighter weight. I do. I, I I like Nash anyway. Sure. Because I think he's gonna finish more plays at three ten than he did at three thirty five. I, I just like to like he lo he loves it. Mm -hmm. if, if you love something that, it's like that matters. Oh, it's like anything else. Mm -hmm. If you truly love something and it's without it's like the agape like unconditional, mm -hmm. you'll do anything. Yeah. 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 He'll do anything. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think when that's the standard, when he could chill and he's not, mm -hmm. you know, you see a guy like Ty Robinson come back and he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. What's the next step for like a Cam Lenhart, Prince Will? So what Prince, does that look like? So it's kind of the same, I think, or different for the same reasons. I think for for Cam, mm -hmm. it's maybe you play inside a little bit more. Okay. Maybe, you know, you you develop 
a capacity to play against the run. So More you of can a three down you, type in, in a three technique ish kind of spot. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's, it's dark in there. It's a little loud. It's noisy. Learn to function in there with Prince. Will, uh, umami well, it's just the opposite, mm-hmm. right? We know the length gifted physically. You, We'll we'll keep saying. I feel like it's the Stephen Bardo. Uh, who was the guy that he would always talk about? He'd say, "I wonder if he knows how good he could be." Was mm. it was it Siobhan Shields? It was somebody. No, it was Blanton. Oh, Delano yeah, Banton. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, Banton. Banton. Yeah. I wonder if he knows how good he could be. And I'm like, he ain't say it every broadcast. Mm. With with Prince, well, you you hope that he understands how good he can be, how good he can be because physically he's, yeah, he's got long arms. He's relatively lean for that we weight. Saw him make some freaky plays last year. Yeah. Be, be good against the run. Yeah. If, if I'm, if I'm, you know, those are, those are the steps for those guys. Kai Wallen, it's hey, hang in there against the intensity, multiple plays in a row, mm-hmm. go from flashy to consistent. Yeah. So I think, They'll they'll have some uh Isaiah Roby, thank you, the mayor. Oh Roby. It was Roby. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> That's right, it was. Yeah. I know it was, it was one of those light skinned guys. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um that's kind of how I feel about Prince Will. Because he you know he says about I don't know, probably twelve words a day, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot in there. There is a lot in there.